Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to the Dictionary Podcast. This is my podcast. I'm talking to you via podcast. Uh, Oh, happy Leap Day. Uh, I hope you knew that you were getting a Leap Day today. Uh, It only happens four times a year. And then every hundred years, you don't get a Leap Day. But then every thousand years, like the year 2000, you get a Leap Day again. So in the year 2100, there will not be a Leap Day. I hope I'm still around to see that. Okay, what is our first word? It is barbitol. I just want to check a couple things. Yes, B-A-R-B-I-T-A-L. I want to say barbitol, but I think it's pronounced barbitol. Uh, let's see, this is a noun from 1919. A crystalline barbiturate. I wanted to say barbiturate, but uh, there's an R in there. Barbiturate. C8H12N2O3, used as a sedative and hypnotic, often in the form of its soluble sodium salt. Uh, This is barbit, barbit is from barbituric, and plus al, uh, al, as in veronal, it's a trademark for barbital. That's where it comes from. Now we have barbitone. It is a noun from 1914. It's British. Uh, it's this uh, barbital synonym. Barbital is a synonym in British. Uh, so this is the same same idea. Barbit is from barbituric plus own. Next we have barbiturate or barbiturate. Uh, and yeah, in the last episode or two, two episodes ago, uh, we had the word barb and it's a slang. I think I said it's a slang for barbiturate or barbiter. How did I say it? Barbiter. You know what? I don't even know what happened. Anyway, this is barbiturate. Uh, it is a noun from 1928. One, a salt or ester of barbituric acid. Number two, any of various derivatives of barbituric acid that are used especially as sedatives, hypnotics, and antispasmodics and are often addictive. And uh, after barbituric acid, it said, in parentheses, as phenobarbital. Let's see. We don't have any etymology. Now we are going to move on to barbituric acid. It is two words. It is a noun from 1866. A synthetic crystalline acid, C4H4N2O3, derived from pyrimidine. Pyrimidine. One of those. Uh, this is partly a part translation of G. barbitusor, which is a regular from the name Barbara plus ISV uric plus G. sour, which means acid. You know, I got to go. We got to go check out this um, abbreviations page to see what some of these mean. Uh, because I am pretty far in the dictionary. I'm almost 100 pages in, and I still don't know what a couple of these things mean. So, ISV is International Scientific Vocabulary. I will try and remember that. International Scientific Vocabulary. And so that part was the um, the uric. And the G is German. That's the sour, S-A-U-R-E. And that means acid. So Barbara plus uric plus sour. Anyway, next we have Barbizon, capital B-A-R-B-I-Z-O-N. It is an adjective from 1889 of relating to or being a school of mid-19th century French landscape painters whose naturalistic canvases were based on direct observation of nature. And this is from Barbizon, France. I didn't have, didn't ever hear of this one. Barbizon. Next we have barbule. B a r b u l e. It is a noun from 1835. A minute barb. A barb that is very tiny, especially one. Oh God! Why am I burping? Especially one of the processes that fringe the barbs of a feather. And then it says to see the feather illustration. Next, we have barb wire. It is a noun from 1880, and we just have the synonym barbed wire. Next is bar car, two words, noun from 1945, and we just have the synonym club car. 
Next is Barcarole. Could spell it B A R C A R O L E or O L L E. Uh, this is a noun from 17, circa 1779. One, a Venetian boat song, usually in 6, 8, or 12, 8 time, characterized by the alternation of a strong and weak beat that suggests a rowing rhythm. Like, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, I don't know, maybe, 6, 8, yeah, I think that's 6, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, number two, music imitating a barcarole. Or would it be, let's see, barcarole. Yeah, that's how it's pronounced. Uh, this is French, barcarole, from Italian dialect in Venice. Barcarola, from barcarolo, which means gondolier. From barca, which means bark. And that is that. Um, yes, yeah, I, I, I mean, I've never really heard one of their songs, but I guess gondoliers usually sing, right? Oh, it's probably a very different world in Venice right now than it was like even 100 years ago or even 50 years ago. Next, we have Barcelona chair. It is two words. Noun from 1970. An armless chair with leather-covered cushions on a stainless steel frame. And this is from Barcelona, Spain. Next, we have Barcan. B-A-R-C-H-A-N. It is a noun from 1888. A moving crescent-shaped sand dune. That's called a bar- barkan. Uh, this is Russian, or from the Russian barkan, B-A-R-K-H-A-N, which is from Kazakh. Next, we have bar chart. Two words, noun from 1914, and we uh, the synonym is bar graph. Next is barcode, noun from 1963. A code consisting of a group of printed and variously patterned bars and spaces and sometimes numerals that is designed to be scanned and read into computer memory and that contains information, as identification, about the object it labels. Barcoded is an adjective and barcoding is a noun. I didn't realize that these were from all the way back in 1963. Um, But yeah, I think the computer was invented in maybe the the 40s or late 40s or something. Uh, So yeah, I guess that's not that surprising. Um, But we, I mean, we still have barcodes, obviously, but now we have QR codes, which I guess they're maybe replacing barcodes. What's the difference? QR codes seem more complicated, so maybe they can just fit more information. Maybe there's so many, um, so many Things like, okay, so for instance, a QR code can take you to a website, for instance. Um, Barcodes usually would just be for like a serial number. Uh, So maybe barcodes, because they're only vertical black and white lines, they can only fit a certain amount of information. But QR codes, because they're much more complicated, can fit other, you know, exponentially more information inside of them. That's my guess. Any of you barcode experts, tell me about it. Um... Let's see, now we have the word bard, B-A-R-D. It is the first form, noun from the 15th century, 1A. A tribal poet-singer skilled in composing and reciting verses on heroes and their deeds. That reminds me of the guy in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Uh, 1B, a composer, singer, or declaimer of epic or heroic verse. Number two, we have the synonym poet. Bardic is an adjective. This is Middle English from Scottish Gaelic and also from Irish. Next, we have the second form of bard. This one could also have an E at the end. It is a noun from the 15th century. A piece of armor or ornament for a horse's neck, breast, or flank. So interesting that uh, this is bard. It covers a horse's neck. Uh, and in the, we also have the word barb. Uh, with a B, and it's uh, covers a human's chin and neck. Uh, let's see. This is Middle French from Barda, from Old Italian Barda, from Arabic dialect Barda, which means pack saddle or saddle cover. Now we have the third form of bard. It is a verb, a transitive verb from circa 1521. One, to furnish with bards. Number two, to dress meat for cooking by covering with strips of fat. Ugh. 
strips of fat. Probably super tasty, but... Yeah. Next we have... Bardolater. B-A-R-D-O-L-A-T-E-R. It is a noun uh, from 1903. A person who idolizes Shakespeare. Bardolater. Uh, Bardolatry is a noun. This is... Okay, so I was going to mention this before, sort of. Uh, this is from the Bard, uh, which is an epithet of Shakespeare. And, uh, you know, they, the Shakespeare is sometimes called the Bard. Uh, and it actually says here, the Bard of Avon or Avon. And, uh, yeah, he was a poet, a writer. Uh, so that's related to the first form of Bard that we uh, saw before. Now, we have one more for this episode. It is Bardalino. Capital B-A-R-D-O-L-I-N-O. It is a noun from 1934. A light red Italian wine. You can have that with your food or something. This is from Bardolino, which is a village on Lake Garda, Italy. So, the word of the episode is is going to be, what did I find the most? Oh, we're going to do barcode as the word of the episode. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful leap day. I hope you leap and frolic all day long. And until next time, this is Spencer reading the dictionary. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of the podcast called The Dictionary. Thank you for finding me. Go do the rating and reviewing. Send me an email if you want, a Twitter message, a an Instagram message. I post silly pictures up there. They're not usually silly pictures, but sometimes I try and have silly captions. Uh, go to Facebook. Um, call my Google Voice. Go to the Patreon. Do whatever you want to do. Just live your life and be happy and don't hurt anybody and be kind, be loving and compassionate. Uh, Positive energy. All right. Happy March, by the way. We are two months into this year, 2020. Uh, This is what? The first word of this episode is bear, B-A-R-E. And I will be saying bear a lot in this episode. Uh, This is the first form. It is an adjective from before the 12th century. 1A, lacking a natural, usual, or appropriate covering. 1B1, lacking clothing, as in bare feet. 1B2, this is obsolete. Bareheaded is a synonym. Uh, Next we have 1C, lacking any tool or weapon, as in opened the box with his bare hands. I can open the box with my bare hands. I'm so strong. Number two, open to view. Synonym is exposed, as in laying bare their secrets. Number three, A, unfurnished or scantily supplied, as in a bare room. Three, B, synonym is destitute, as in bare of all safeguards. Four, A, having nothing left over or added, as in, the bare necessities of life. I remember when I was a kid, I saw the Jungle Book in the theater. Uh, and it, uh, by the side note, it was years until I realized that the Jungle Book didn't come out in the mid-80s. It came out many years before that, so I was a little confused. Uh, but I just remember when coming out of the theater, the theater singing, The Bare Necessities, Anyway, I don't think I quite understood the uh, the double meaning of that at the time. Okay, now we have 4B. Synonym is mere, M-E-R-E, as in a bear two hours away. 4C, devoid of amplification or adornment, as in the bear facts. Number five is obsolete. Synonym is worthless. Bareness is a noun. This is uh, from Old English bear, B-A-E-R, or I could also say B-A-S-H-R. It is akin to the Old High German bar, which means naked, from the Lithuanian basas, which means barefoot. Now we have some synonym information for bear. Again, this is B-A-R-E, not B-E-A-R. Although I hadn't said that before, but you knew what I meant. 
bare, naked, nude, bald, barren, mean, deprived of naturally or conventionally appropriate covering. Bare implies the removal of what is additional, su superfluous, ornamental, or dispensable, as an apartment with bare walls. Naked suggests absence of protective or ornamental covering, but may imply a state of nature, of destitution, or of defenselessness, as in poor half-naked children. Nude implies especially to the unclothed human figure, as in a nude model posing for art students. Bald implies actual or seeming absence of natural covering and may suggest a conspicuous bareness, as in a bald mountain peak. Barren often suggests aridity or impoverishment or sterility, as in barren plains. Now we have the second form of bare. It is a transitive verb from before the 12th century, to make or lay bare. Synonym is uncover. Now we have the third form of bare. It is an archaic a uh, past form of the word bear. Is it a pa 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 archaic past of bear, B-E-A-R? Um, I, I, th I think it's saying it's a past form of that, but it's archaic, so it's past past. Now we have bareback. It is all one word. It is an adverb or an adjective from 1562. On the bare back of a horse, without a saddle as in, likes riding bareback. Also, bareback riding. Next, we have bare boat. One word. It is a noun from circa 1949. A boat chartered without its crew. So, if you wanted to provide your own crew, is that what that means? Or you just wanted to go with no crew, and then you get stranded. Next, we have bare bones. Two words. Noun from 1649. The barest essentials, facts, or elements, as in, the bare bones of her life. Bare bones with a hyphen is an adjective. Now we have barefaced. One word, adjective from 1590. One, having the face uncovered. One A, having no whiskers. Synonym is beardless. I wonder if beard and bear, B-E-A-R, are related and then, of course, B-A-R-E is probably also related. 1-B, wearing no mask. 2-A, synonyms are open and unconcealed, as in barefaced impudence. 2-B, having or showing a lack of scruples, as in a barefaced lie. Barefacedly is an adverb. Barefacedness is a noun. Now we have barefoot, one word. It is an adverb or adjective from before the 12th century, with the feet bare, as in walked barefoot. Also as in barefoot boy with cheek of tan, and that is from J.G. Whittier. Uh, if I find the quote, I'll share it in the episode details, and I may not find the quote. Now we have bare hand, one word, transitive verb from 1973, to catch or retrieve, a baseball, with a bare hand. Now we have bare handed, there's a hyphen, adverb or adjective from the 15th century, one, without gloves, two, without tools or weapons, as in fight an animal bare handed. Probably not a good idea. Next, we have bareheaded, one word, adverb, or adjective from the 14th century, without a covering for the head, as in, went bareheaded in the hot sun. Bad idea. Also as in, a bareheaded boy who had lost his cap. Now we have bare knuckle. There's a hyphen. It is a adjective, an adjective or adverb. I had to say an there because I didn't want to get called out for using the wrong form of a. Uh, from 1903, one, not using boxing gloves, as in, bare, uh, no, champion bare knuckle prize fighter of England. That is from Dennis Craig. Or is Dennis Craig the champion bare knuckle prize fighter of England? Or did he just say that someone was a champion bare knuckle prize fighter of England? I don't know. Also is in, when men fought bare knuckle. 
Number two, having a fierce, unrelenting character, as in bare-knuckle politics. Next, we have barely. It is an adverb from before the 12th century. One, in a meager manner. Synonym is plainly, as in a barely furnished room. A barely furnished room with bare walls. Number two, synonyms are scarcely and hardly, as in barely enough money for lunch. Next, we have the word, it's a good one, it is barf, B-A-R-F. I, I, didn't, I thought I was going to say B-A-R-F. It is an intransitive verb from 1956, and we just have the synonym vomit. So if you want to learn more about barf, you're going to have to wait until we get to the word vomit. Uh, by the way, the origin of barf is unknown. Uh, there is a movie called Spaceballs from the 80s. I'm sure most of you have seen it, and if you haven't, you should go watch it. It is very silly. But in there, there is a, a, a creature, an animal, a person, whatever you want to call him. He is half man, half dog. He is a mog, and his, uh, his name, uh, he says his name is Barf, but his full name is Bartholomew. Uh, played by the wonderful John Candy. Uh, next we have, I want to say barfly. That's how I first saw the word, but it is actually barfly. Uh, it is a noun from 1910, a person who spends much time in bars. Last word for this episode is the first form of bargain, B-A-R-G-A-I-N. It is a noun from the 14th century, one an agreement between parties set yeah there's an l in there an agreement between parties settling what each gives or receives in a transaction between them or what course of action or policy each pursues in respect to the other number 2 something acquired by or as if by bargaining especially an advantageous purchase as in at that price the car is a bargain Number three, a transaction, situation, or event regarded in the light of its results, as in a bad bargain. Into the bargain, or in the bargain, is a phrase, and it uh, this, there's a synonym for it. It just means besides. So if you, instead of saying besides, you could say into the bargain, or in the bargain, as in tastes good and is good for you, into the bargain. I have never heard this before, and I think it is very strange. Um, all right, the word of the episode is going to be barf. Yep, that's the word. Uh, let's see, that's all for the words. You can turn me off now. I thought I had something to say. Um, oh, at the time of recording, which is February 20th, I'm, I'm getting pretty far ahead again. Um, it was my first time working out in the morning um, after my foot injury, uh, which was about five weeks. I think it was exactly... Five weeks and a day ago, I think. Um, so yeah, that was kind of weird trying to get back into that into that routine. Um, my foot is mostly healed, but the the bottom uh, still has a little bit of a weird uh, numbness. I still have a scab on the top of my foot, which is slowly going away. Uh, I'm thinking in the next uh, week or so or less, it should be gone completely, and then I'll have a sweet sweet uh, s uh, scar. Uh, all right, so that's all I got to say. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer reading the dictionary. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of this podcast called The Dictionary, the only podcast that I'm aware of where somebody is reading the entire dictionary over many, many years. I hope you are enjoying it. Thank you for coming. I said that already. Okay, let's talk about some word. Word -de -z. Words. The first word is bargain, B-A-R-G-A-I-N. It is the second form. It is a verb from the 14th century. Intransitive definitions are first. One, to negotiate over the terms of a purchase, agreement, or contract. Synonym is haggle. Number two, to come to terms. Synonym is agree. Now the transitive definitions. One, to bring to a desired level by bargaining. As in... Bargain a price down. We all want a good deal. Number two, to sell or dispose of by bargaining. 
Uh, bargainer is a noun, and bargain for means uh, the synonym is expect, E-X-P-E-C-T, as in more work than I bargain for. I'm going to turn up my headphone volumes. There we go. Uh, let's see. This is uh, from Anglo-French bargainer, probably f- uh, of Germanic origin, akin to the Old English bourgeon, which means to borrow. And there's more at the word bury, like I bury something in the yard. Uh, all right. Next, we have bargain basement. Uh, there is a hyphen. It is an adjective from 1948. One of inferior quality or worth. Number two. Markedly inexpensive, as in bargain basement rates. Bargain basement is... Oh, well, that's uh, that's the next one. Uh, this one has no hyphen, so it's two separate words. It's a noun from 1899. A section of a store, as the basement, where merchandise is sold at reduced prices. So if you want a deal, go find the basement. But there's no basement at the Alamo. Next we have barge. B-A-R-G-E. It is the first form. It's a noun from the 14th century. Any of various boats as 1A. No, there's no numbers, just A. A roomy, usually flat bottom boat used chiefly for the transport of goods on inland waterways and usually propelled by towing. And B, a large motorboat supplied to the large flag officer of a flagship. And I thought that was it, but now we have C, a roomy pleasure boat, especially a boat of state elegantly furnished and decorated. Um, yep, now we have the second form of barge. It is a varb, a, a varb? No, it's a barge, it's a verb. It's not a burge, that's a varb. Uh, it's a verb from 1649. Transitive definition says to carry by barge. And we have two intransitive definitions. Number one. To move ponderously or clumsily. That's what I would do. I barge about. Uh, Number two, to thrust oneself heedlessly or unceremoniously, as in barged into the meeting. Now we have barge board. It's one word, noun from 1827, an often ornamented board that conceals roof timbers projecting over gables. And we have a picture of a barge board. A little black and white drawing that is uh it's very ornate, uh so it's the the gable that which is like the short small little roof that sticks out of the roof so it's pointed and then there's a lot of uh, ornamental curved things added to it and that's a barge board. Now we have barge, b a r g e e. It's a noun from 1666. It is British with the synonym barge man which we will be getting to shortly. Just have some patience. Now we have bargello. It's the word barge with L-L-O at the end. Like uh, you can make some bargello in your fridge. I don't know. I'm not quick enough. Uh, This is a noun from circa 1924. A needlework stitch that produces a zigzag pattern. So, this is from Bargello, a museum in Florence, Italy. From the use of this stitch in the upholstery of 17th century chairs at the Bargello. Um, but it's weird that they named it after the museum that the upholstery is in, or the chairs are in. Uh, wouldn't you want to name it after maybe the person who did the stitches, or where the stitches were made? Maybe that was in Florence? I don't know. I'm just trying to think too much about this. Now here's bargeman, your favorite word. It is a noun from the 14th century. The master or a deckhand of a barge. Next is bar graph. It is two words. A noun from 1924. The graphic means of quantitative comparison by rectangles and lengths proportional to the measure of the data or things being compared. Called also bar chart. Anybody who loves data loves bar graphs. You want to see how it all looks together. It's so much fun. Now we have bar hop. One word. It's an intransitive verb from the uh, the year 1947. The year was 1947. The word bar hop was just coined and people were all a rage. Uh, to visit and drink at a series of bars in the course of an evening. 1947 was a very different world than it is now. 
And uh, I'm really curious to know the situation of how this word got started. And, uh, you know, so, you know, the, the people in 1947 probably would have been born around 1925, 1930, maybe even. They, they talk differently. They had, they had a different, I don't know, it's just different. And they, they came up with bar hop. I guess now we've got bar crawl. You could do, you could do either one. Next, we have bariatric. It is an adjective from 1977 relating to or specializing in the treatment of obesity. Now we have barista, a word that uh, everybody knows these days. It is a noun from 1982, a person who makes and serves coffee as espresso to the public. I've probably said this before, but I'll say it again. Espresso has no X in it. It is not espresso. It is espresso. Uh, So this is an Italian word, a person working behind a bar, from the word bar, which means bar, uh, from the English word plus ista, uh, that's not really helping me, but it has to do with a person behind a bar. So would that mean that um, a bartender in Italy would also be called a barista? Probably not, unless they just made coffee. So interesting. I actually was a barista for a little bit of time uh, at two places, now that I think about it. Uh, yeah, I, I made the coffee drinks, and I didn't love it. But it was a good learning experience, and I suggest that everybody um, get into... Uh, what am I trying to say? Everybody have some experience in serving, uh, waiter, waitressing, bartending, uh, barista, um, all that stuff. You need to learn it a little bit. Now we have bar- Barit. I think that's how it's pronounced. B-A-R-I-T-E. It is a noun from 1837. Barium sulfate occurring as a mineral. Uh, This is Greek berites, which means weight. Like, my weight is about 150 pounds. And that is from the word baris. B-A-R-Y-S. Next and last word for this episode is baritone. B-A-R-I-T-O-N-E. Uh, You could also replace the I with a Y. I didn't know that. This is the first form, by the way. The second form will be in the next episode. I could probably read it in this one, but I'm not gonna, just because that's what I'm doing. This is a noun from 1609. One, a male singing voice of medium compass between bass and tenor. Also, a person having this voice. What, what voice do I have? Am I a tenor? Am I a baritone? I don't think I'm an alto, and I don't think I'm a bass. But I can sing a little bit low, and I can sing a little bit high. No, we're not going to do that. Number two, a member uh, of a family of instruments having a range between tenor and bass. Usually it's, the range is usually much wider than tenor and bass. But uh, they have to have at least tenor and bass, so there is a baritone. Um, and then it says, especially the baritone, baritone sax horn or baritone saxophone. Baritonal is an adjective. This is from French, bariton, um, or Italian, baritono, which is from the Greek baritonos, which means deep sounding. Well, so what does the word, the Greek word for bass mean in Greek, in Greece? Deep sounding, deeper sounding? Um, Anyway, from baris, which means heavy, plus tonos, which means tone. And there's more at the word grieve. Again, how did grieve get into this uh, formula? Uh, Let's see. I need to pick a word of the episode, and I'm going to pick baritone as the word of the episode because for many years I played the baritone saxophone. And it was lots of fun. I wasn't amazing, but I think I was pretty decent. Um, And uh, yeah, I had a fun time. I played the bass saxophone for a little bit as well. I still actually really want to get back into playing the saxophone, specifically a bass if I could get one. But that's a lot of money. Um, It's just a lot of fun, and I'm not a good player by any means. I can't really improvise. I can read something that's written, but they're just fun, low instruments. Uh, Yeah, that's what I got to say. So you may have noticed this episode was a little bit on the fast side because right after I'm recording this episode... I'm not even recording more episodes. I'm just doing one this time, and I have a massage scheduled. I'm getting my first massage in 
many years, I don't know how many years, I've been meaning to get a massage, monthly massages, for at least the last couple of years. Uh, and I think my body is going to be a puddle of goo by the time uh, this massage is done because I'm just tight all over and it's terrible. And uh, take care of your bodies, people. Stretch and get massages and stuff like that. Anyway, thank you very much for listening to this episode of the podcast called The Dictionary. And until next time, this is Spencer reading The Dictionary. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of the podcast called The Dictionary, the only podcast where somebody is reading the dictionary. That person is me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi. The first word for this episode is baritone. B-A-R-I-T-O-N-E. And as I said at the end of the last episode, it could be could be also with a Y. This is the second form. It's an adjective from 1729. Uh, Do I need to raise this up a little bit? Maybe I do. Okay, Uh, let's see. Relating to or having the range or part of a baritone. Yes, that is much louder. Thank you for doing that. Uh, Next, we have barium, B-A-R-I-U-M. It's a noun from 1808. One, a silver, white, malleable, toxic, divalent, metallic element of the alkaline earth group that occurs only in combination. And then it says to see the element table. Number two, we have the synonym barium sulfate, which is our next word, barium sulfate. It's two words. It's a noun from 1866. A crystalline insoluble compound, BASO4, that is used especially as a pigment and extender, as a filler, as in fluids used in gas and oil drilling, and as a substance opaque to x-rays in medical photography of the alimentary canal. Uh, So if they want something to be opaque in an x-ray, they'll put some barium sulfate there. Next we have bark, B-A-R-K. It is the first form, verb, from before the 12th century. Uh, Let's see, we're going to start with the intransitive verbs. 1A, to make the characteristic short, loud cry of a dog. Bark. 1B. To make a noise resembling a bark. Well, isn't that the same thing? Uh, 2. To speak in a curt, loud, and usually angry tone. Synonym is snap. Now, we got the transitive uh, definitions. 1. To utter in a curt, loud, usually angry tone, as in an officer barking orders. 2. To advertise by persistent outcry, as in barking their wares. We've got a phrase. It is bark up the wrong tree. That means to promote or follow a mistaken course, as in doing research. Uh, Definitely, I think there's there's other definitions to that. Um, But yeah, in general, that's that's correct. Um, Yeah, the parentheses was just an example. But yeah, I think the, the rest of the definition was good. Okay, moving on to... Let's see, the etymology says this is Middle English, Birkin, from Old English, Björkan. I say these words funny because I just don't know how to pronounce them, and I'm just sort of saying it kind of like how it's spelled. Uh, This is akin to the Old Norse Birkja, or Birkja, B-E-R-K-J-A, which means to bark, uh, from the Lithuanian Birgeti, which means to growl. Now we have the second form of bark. It is a noun from before the 12th century. 1a, the sound made by a barking dog. 1b, a similar sound. 2, a short, sharp, preemptory, pre, is that how you say that? Preemptory, P-E-R, no, per, peremptory, P-E-R-E-M-P-T-O-R-Y, peremptory tone of speech or utterance. Barkless is an adjective. Now we have the third form of bark. It is a noun from the 14th century. One, the tough exterior covering of a woody root or stem, specifically the tissues outside the cambium that include an inner layer, especially of secondary phloem and an outer layer of periderm. Lots of plant-based scientific words I don't know, like cambium and periderm, and phloem. I love that word. P-A- P-H-L-O-E-M. 
I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Phloem. Uh, let's see. Now we have number two. Uh, we just have the number two definition for the word cinchona. C-I-N-C-H-O-N-A. Number three, a candy containing chocolate and nuts that is made in a sheet and broken into pieces. Mmm, chocolate and nuts. Bark. Bark, 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 bark. Uh, but the, but the, now we have barkless. That is uh, an adjective again. I feel like my brain doesn't want to think right now. So we're going to move on to the fourth form of bark. It is a transitive verb from the 14th century. One, to treat with an infusion of tan bark. Number 2A, to strip the bark from. 2B, to rub off or abrade the skin of, as in, barked a shin on the desk. Okay, now we have the fifth and final form of bark, B-A-R-K, or it could be spelled B-A-R-Q-U-E. This is a noun from the 15th century. 1A, a small sailing ship. Try and say that 10 times fast. 1B, a sailing ship of three or more masts with the aftmost mast fore and aft rigged and the others square rigged. That's uh, some sailing terms in there that I'm not familiar with. Number two, a craft propelled by sails or oars. Now we've got the word bark beetle. Two words, uh, and beetle is spelled the normal way that you would spell the beetle that's on the ground and the outside. Now, this is a noun from 1862. Any of numerous beetles that bore under the bark of trees, both as a larva and as an adult. So they like their trees. And now we have barkeep. One word. Also barkeeper. It is a noun from 1671, and we just have the synonym bartender. Uh, do you say, hey, barkeep, when you want another drink? Um... Not sure if that's the nicest thing to do, so maybe you shouldn't do that. Now we have barkentine, B-A-R-K-E-N-T-I-N-E. And you could also spell it with a Q-U-E, uh, like we had that one a few words ago. This is a noun from 1693. A sailing ship of three or more masts with the four masts square rigged and the others fore and aft rigged. Uh, And yes, it's very similar to the other one. It's all related to boats and sailing and stuff like that. Uh, Let's see. We're going to skip the etymology. We are going to move on to barker. It is the first form. Noun from the 14th century. One that barks. Especially a person who advertises by hawking at an entrance to a show. That's a hard job. You got to say the same thing over and over again and be in people's faces and be irritating and not really care what people think of you. Uh, I had to do that once, sort of. um, We were trying to raise money for this organization. Uh, There was a fair going on, and, you know, everybody that walked past us, we were, you know, trying to say, hey, will you buy the thing for this thing, and it's going to a good cause. And you just try and make it interesting for yourself because there's different people going by, but you know that you're saying the same thing over and over again, And, you know, they're not necessarily hearing it over and over again like you are, but you just try and have fun with it. Uh, Let's see. Okay, now we have the second form of barker. It is a noun from 1611, one that removes or prepares bark. Now we have barking deer, two words. Uh, It's a noun from 1880, and we have the synonym muntiak. I don't know how that's pronounced. It is spelled M-U-N-T-J-A-C. Good times. Now we have barky. It is an adjective from 1590. The other forms are barkier and barkiest. What is this word? It says it is covered with or resembling bark. Uh, I Yeah, I mean, I guess that's a word. I never, I don't think I've ever heard somebody use it. That tree over there, it's so barky. Oh, but it's not as barky as that tree over there. That one's barkier. But there's that third and final tree. It is the barkiest of all the barky trees. Now we have barley. It is a noun from before the 12th century. A cereal grass having the flowers in dense spikes with long awns and three spikelets at each joint of the rackies or ratchies. Also, its seed used especially in malt beverages, breakfast foods, and stock feeds. 
There was that word spikelets again. I think that's how it's pronounced, but I don't know. Is it spikelets? I don't know. Uh, let's see. This is the genus is Hordium. Um, also, especially Hordium vulgare. This is from Middle English barley with no e from the Old English berlick, which is uh, the a and the e are combined, and that means of barlick. No, sorry, of barley. I was thinking of the word barlick or berlick. It is akin to the Old English bear, B-E-R-E, which means barley, uh, from Latin, uh, the word far, F-A-R. Um, I guess barley and far sort of sound similar at the beginning. Um, and that means spelt. Far in Latin means spelt, uh, which I think is another grain, right? Right. Okay, now we have the last word for this episode. It is barley brie. So barley, B-A-R-L-E-Y hyphen B-R-E-E could also be, this is fun, barley brew, B-R-O-O. Which one do you want to say? This is a noun from 1724. It is chiefly Scottish. Uh, no surprise there. And it, uh, the synonym is whiskey. So in Scotland, they call whiskey barley brie or barley brew. Um, also, we have another synonym, malt liquor. So this is from, let's see, barley plus the Scottish word brie or brew, which I guess also means brie. Scots, can you tell me what this word actually means? Does it just, is brie or brew? I mean brew, you brew something like a like a beer, but this isn't beer. I don't know. That's a fun one. Um, there is a chance... I hope I'm not jinxing anything by saying this, but there is a chance that I'm going to go get to visit Scotland uh, near the end of the year, and I'm very excited for that. So I am going to pick Barley Brie as the word of the episode because it's funny and fun, and Barley Brew is another funny word, and it means whiskey or malt liquor, and uh, the Scots, uh, I like the way they speak. Uh, Let's see, I had the massage yesterday, and that was great, and I am looking forward to getting a massage every month, Um, and my my body just really needs it. Like I said yesterday, um, you know, take care of your body, eat right, and exercise, and do all the things. Uh, All right, that's the end of the episode. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer reading the dictionary. Goodbye. Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary, the only podcast where some idiot is reading the dictionary. First word for this episode is barleycorn, B-A-R-L-E-Y-C-O-R-N. It's a noun from 1500. One, a grain of barley. Two, an old unit of length equal to a third of an inch. Ooh, I think we should bring this back. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to say, you know, I think that's a seven barley corn. I don't know what I'm talking about. Next we have Barlow. It is a noun from 1884, a sturdy, inexpensive jackknife. This is from Barlow, the family of 18th century England knife makers. Very cool. Uh, now we have Barm, B-A-R-M. It is a noun from before the 12th century. Yeast formed on fermenting malt liquors. It's called barm. Uh, This is from the uh, Middle English berm, from the Old English bjorma, akin to the mm, MLG. I'm going to say Middle Laughing German, uh, berm, which means yeast, from Latin fermentum, which means yeast. That's interesting. And fervere, that's the verb, which means to boil, from the Old Irish berbade, B-E-R-B-A-I-D, which means he boils. Um, Could also just be she boils, I'm going to say probably inaccurately. Uh, Now we have barmaid. It is a noun from circa 1658, a woman who serves liquor at a bar. Now we have barman. It is a noun from 1837, chiefly British. We have the synonym bartender. You've got bartender, barman, and barkeep. Now we have, I should have read this ahead of time, Barmecidal, capital B-A-R-M-E-C-I-D-A-L. Could also be Barmecide. It is an adjective from 1842, providing only the illusion of abundance, as in a Barmecidal feast. This is from Barmecide, a wealthy Persian who, in a tale of the Arabian Nights entertainments, invited a beggar to a feast of imaginary food. 
I don't like imaginary food, if you couldn't tell, because I like food. Now we have bar mitzvah. It is uh, the first form. For those of you who don't know, it is two words. Bar is the first word, and mitzvah, M-I-T-Z-V-A-H, is the second word. It is a noun from 1816. One, a Jewish boy who reaches his 13th birthday and attains the age of religious duty and responsibility. Number two, the... Where did it go? The initiatory ceremony recognizing a boy as a bar mitzvah. So a bar mitzvah has a bar mitzvah. This is Hebrew. Uh, bar mitzvah, I don't know. I mean, I assume it's pronounced the same way. Uh, mitzvah is spelled M-I-S-W-A-H. Literally means son of the divine law. Actually, son of the law. And then in parentheses is the word divine. Now we have the second form of bar mitzvah. It is a verb from 1947 to administer the ceremony of bar mitzvah to. So somebody is bar mitzvahing the bar mitzvah at the bar mitzvah. That is technically an accurate sentence to say. Now we have barmi, B-A-R-M-Y. It is the first form, adjective from the 15th century, full of froth or ferment. Uh, related to the word barm from before, talk, talking about uh, fermenting malt liquors. Now we have the second form of barmy. It is an adjective from 1892. Uh, this is chiefly British, and we have the number two definition for the word balmy, B-A-L-M-Y. Uh, so based on context, you can know if you're talking about something that's balmy or something that's fermenting. Now we have the word barn. Were you raised in a barn? It is a noun from before the 12th century. 1A, a usually large building for the storage of farm products or feed and usually for the housing of farm animals or farm equipment. 1B, an unusually large and usually bare building, as in a great barn of a hotel. That is from W.A. White. Number two, a large building for the housing of a fleet of vehicles, as trolley cars or trucks. Barn-like is an adjective, and Barney is not a purple dinosaur. It is an adjective. Have you ever called something Barney? Like it's like a barn? Uh, that's weird. Uh, this is from Middle English Bairn, from Old English Bairn. Wow, there's three vowels. Uh, from Bear, which means barley, plus Ern, which means house. Ah, so the word barn comes basically means barley house. Um, oh, also, Aaron could mean house or store. So, barley house or barley store. Fascinating. I, I really find that stuff interesting. I really do. I don't, I'm, it's, you know, when you learn something of like where, why do we say this word? Uh, I don't know. I just find that really cool. Okay. Barnabas is our next word, capital B A R N A B A S. It is a noun from the 14th century a companion of the Apostle Paul on his first missionary journey. Now we have barnacle. It is a noun from the 15th century. One, we have the synonym barnacle goose, which is our next word. But we're not going to get there. We're, uh, we're, uh, we are going to get there. Sorry. That was misinformation. First, we're going to say the number two definition for barnacle. It is, uh, let's see, in a a brackets, it's talking about, oh, that's the etymology. We'll talk about that after. Okay, number two, any of numerous marine crustaceans with feathery appendages for gathering food that are free swimming as larvae, but permanently fixed as adults. We have a couple uh, parentheses sections. The marine crustaceans scientific name or subclass name is Cirripedia, and um, in parentheses after... Uh, permanently fixed. It says as to rocks, boat hulls, or whales. Uh, so it's talking about when they're adults, they are permanently fixed to sometimes a, a rocks, boat hulls, or whales. And sorry if that was confusing the way I worded all that. So the etymology um, for the original word, just in general, comes from the Middle English barnakil, an alternative of barnake or barnaki uh, or berneck, B-E-R-N-E-K-K-E. And then the etymology for the number two definition is from a popular belief that the goose grew from the crustacean. So the barnacle goose, they thought it grew from the crustacean? People were so stupid. Barnacled, 
with an ed is an adjective. Now we have barnacle goose, two words down from 1768. A European goose that has a whitish face and black breast and breeds in the Arctic. Scientific name is Branta leucop leucopsis or leucopsis. Why they thought that it grew from the barnacles in the water, I have no idea. Now we have barn burner, two words, noun from circa 1960, one that arouses much interest or excitement, as in, the game should be a real barn burner. I'm sure the etymology of that is pretty interesting, like, it, the game was so exciting back in, you know, whenever it happened, they uh, were so excited that they burned down the barn. Now we have barn dance, noun from 1831, an American social dance originally held in a barn and featuring several dance forms as square dancing. Now we have barn lot, L-O-T, two words, noun from 1724. It is chiefly southern and midland, and we just have the synonym barnyard. And last word for this episode is barn owl, two words, noun from 1674. A widely distributed owl that has plumage, mottled buff brown and gray, above and chiefly white below. Uh, I want to say that again in a more accurate way. A widely distributed owl that has plumage, mottled buff brown and gray, above and chiefly white below, frequents barns and other buildings and preys especially on rodents. The scientific name is Tito Alba, T Y T O. A L B A. And what, oh, what will be the word of the episode? Um, I'm going to pick Barnacle Goose as the word of the episode because I thought uh, where the name came from was really silly. That is everything for this episode. Thank you very much for joining me. And until next time, this is Spencer reading the dictionary. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Thank you for joining me on this journey that we call the dictionary it's a podcast where i'm reading the words in the dictionary that is right uh all right first word for this episode is barn raising b-a-r-n next word r-a-i-s-i-n-g it is a noun from 1856 a gathering for the purpose of erecting a barn compare to the word b b-e-e -E, but the third form of it We'll get there later. Next, we have barnstorm. It is all one word. It is an intransitive verb from 1883. One, to tour through rural districts, staging usually theatrical performances. Number two, to travel from place to place, making brief stops, as in a political campaign or a promotional tour. Number three, to pilot one's airplane in sightseeing flights with passengers or in exhibition stunts in an unscheduled course, especially in rural districts. Now, I told you it was an intransitive verb, and those three definitions were, in fact, intransitive, but now we have a transitive verb definition. I don't understand why the dictionary doesn't say all the time VB at the beginning to say that it's a verb, because when it does that, it helps me understand. But when it only says VI or VT at the beginning, I think that that's what it is for the whole thing, but it's not, because now we have VT here at the end. That means to travel across while barnstorming. Barnstormer is a noun. Now we have barn swallow. It is a noun from 1851. A swallow that is widespread in the northern hemisphere has a deeply forked tail and often nests in or near buildings. Scientific name is Hirundo rustica, of the family Hirundinidae. Now we have the word barnyard. It is the first form, noun from the 14th century, a usually fenced area adjoining a barn. Now we have the second form of barnyard. It is an adjective from 1927, and we have some very interesting uh, synonyms here. They are smutty, earthy, and scatological. Uh, as in barnyard humor. So barnyard humor could be smutty humor, earthy humor, or scatological humor. Now we have barnyard grass. It is two words. Noun from 1843. A coarse annual panicled grass that has flowers born on only one side of the raceme and is nearly cosmopolitan as a weed in cultivated ground. The scientific name is Echinocla, nope, 
Echinocloa crustgalli. Crustgalli. Uh, apologies to all you scientists out there. Now we have the prefix baro, B E O N O, B A R O, and it just says C, the prefix bar, B A R. Now we have barogram. It is a noun from 1875, a barographic tracing or barographic tracing. Now we have barograph or I think it's barograph, yeah. Uh, it is a noun from circa 1864, a recording barometer. Barographic is an adjective or barographic. Now we have barolo, capital B A R O L O. It is a noun from 1875, a dry red Italian wine. I probably would hate it. This is from Barolo, which is a village in the Piedmont region of Italy. I would love to go visit there, though. I'll try their wine. I just can't guarantee I'll like it. Now we have barometer. It is a noun from circa 1666. One, an instrument for determining the pressure of the atmosphere and hence for assisting in forecasting weather and for determining altitude. Number two, something that indicates fluctuations as in public opinion, as in housing sales and other economic barometers. Number three, we have the synonyms standard and test, as in a barometer to measure high school talent. And that is a quote from Jeff Felenzer. Felenzer, Jeff Felenzer. Uh, Barometric is an adjective, and barometrically is an adverb, and barometry is a noun. Now we have barometric pressure. Noun from 1807, the pressure of the atmosphere, usually expressed in terms of the height of a column of mercury. That stuff is beyond my brain comprehension. Now we have baron, B-A-R-O-N, baron or baron, probably, maybe. It is a noun from the 13th century. 1A, one of a class of tenants holding his rights and title by military or other honorable service directly from a feudal superior as a king. 1B, a lord of the realm. Synonyms are noble and peer, P-E-E-R. 2A, a member of the lowest grade of the peerage in Great Britain. And peerage is spelled P-E-E, how many E's? P-E-E-R-A-G-E. 2B, a nobleman on the continent of Europe of varying rank. 2C, a member of the lowest order of nobility in Japan. Number 3, a joint of meat consisting of two sirloins or loins and legs not cut apart at the backbone, as in a baron of beef. I have never heard this. A baron of beef? All right. Uh, Yeah. Number four, a man who possesses great power or influence in some field of activity, as in a cattle baron. Interesting that it's the second beef cow reference. Uh, Let's see. This is Middle English from Anglo-French from Germanic or of Germanic origin, akin to the old high German barrow, which means freeman or freeman. Now we have baronage. It is a noun from the 13th century, the whole body of barons or peers. Synonym is the number two definition for the word nobility. Now we have baroness. It is a noun from the 15th century, one, the wife or widow of a baron. Number two, a woman who holds a baronial title in her own right. And I think I said baronial right, or it could be baronial, one of those. And let's see, now we have baronet. Uh, It's the word baron with an E-T. It is a noun from 1614, the holder of a rank of honor below a baron and above a knight. So it's like a little baron, a baronet. Last word for this episode is baronetage. This is a weird word. It's the word baronet that we just read with A-G-E at the end. It is a noun from 1760. Number one, we just have the synonym baronetcy. Is that how you pronounce it? That's probably on the next page. 
Uh, baronet. Oh, it's the first word on the next page, and it looks like it's pronounced baronets. Baronetsy, yeah, or baron, bar, baronetsy, baronetsy. One of those. That is that uh, number two for baronetage. It is the whole body of baronets. Uh, because we had baronage, that was the whole body of barons, and now we have baronetage, and it's the whole body of baronets. So, what are we going to pick as the word of the episode? We are going to pick barometer, because I wanted to. Thank you very much for listening. Apologies if I went through these super fast. Some of you probably love it. Some of you probably hate it. I am very tired right now, and I just want to go home. So that's why I wanted to get through them quickly. And I really, really needed to record because I needed to get some episodes in the bank. All right. Thank you and goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of the Dictionary Podcast, the only podcast where somebody's reading the dictionary. The first word for this episode is baronetcy. B-A-R-O-N-E-T-C-Y. Why? Because that's how it's spelled. This is a noun from 1795, the rank of a baronet. Now we have barong or barang, B-A-R-O-N-G. This is a noun from 1898, a thick-backed, thin-edged knife or sword used by the Moros. This is probably from the Maranao. How do you say that word? Maranao word. Uh, oh, it doesn't say... Okay, well, that's sort of the end of the sentence. Um, so I guess it's probably from the Maranao word, barang, and Maranao is an Austronesian language of southern Mindanao. Uh, yeah, okay. I want to see a picture of this. Now we have baronial. It is an adjective from 1767, one of or relating to a baron or the baronage. Number two, synonyms are stately and ample, as in a baronial room. Now we have barony, baron with a Y. It is a noun from the 14th century. One, the domain, rank, or dignity of a baron. Number two, a vast private landholding. Number three, a field of activity under the sway of an individual or a special group. Now we have baroque. B-A-R-O-Q-U-E. It is the first form. Uh, It is an adjective from 1765. One, of relating to or having the characteristics of a style or artistic expression prevalent, especially in the 17th century, that is marked generally by use of complex forms, bold ornamentation, and the juxtaposition of contrasting elements often conveying a sense of drama, movement, and tension. I bet you didn't expect that uh, definition to go on as long as it did, because I sure didn't. Number two, characterized by grotesqueness, extravagance, complexity, or flamboyance. Number three, irregularly shaped. uh, Used often of uh, gems, it says, as in a baroque pearl. Baroquely is an adverb. This is from Middle French, baroque with two R's, which means irregularly shaped of a pearl, in parentheses, from the Portuguese word barocco, which means irregularly shaped pearl. I love learning these things, don't you? Now we have the second form of baroque. It is a noun from 1877, the baroque style or the period in which it flourished. Or you could just say flourished. Flourished, flourished. Flourished. Okay, now we have baroreceptor. It is one word. Uh, could also be baroceptor without the re. This is a, a noun from 1948. A sensory nerve ending, especially in the walls of large arteries, as the carotid sinus, that is sensitive to changes in blood pressure. Next we have barotrauma. Uh, both of these were are one word also. Uh, This is a noun from 1937. Injury of a body part or organ as a result of changes in barometric pressure. Uh, I've never gone scuba scuba diving, but I'm assuming uh, you could have barotrauma if you go scuba scuba diving the wrong way. Uh, All right, next we have barouche. B-A-R-O-U-C-H-E. It is a noun from 1801. 
a four-wheeled carriage with a driver's seat high in front, two double seats inside facing each other, and a folding top over the back seat. I feel like I should have been paying more attention while I read that. A four-wheeled carriage with a driver's seat high in front. Oh, sure, I've probably seen pictures of this, but I didn't know it was called a barouche. Uh, This is from German barouche, B-A-R-U-T-S-C-H-E, from the Italian barocchio or biroccio, ultimately from Latin birotus, which means two-wheeled, but this is a four-wheeled thing. Uh, So that means two-wheeled from the bi prefix plus rota, which means wheel, so, birotis is two wheels, uh, and there's more at the word roll. But again, this is a four-wheeled carriage, so what happened there? It should be a quadruche. Okay, now we have bark and barkentine, but they are spelled B-A-R-Q-U-E, and then the second one, you add an N-teen at the end. And these are just variations of bark and barkentine with Ks instead of Q-U's. Now we have barquette. Uh, This is a noun from circa 1949. A small boat-shaped pastry shell. A small boat-shaped pastry shell? Hmm. Uh, This is French diminutive of bark, which means bark, which means, which is a ship. I don't remember what I read before. Was a bark a ship? Probably. Bark had a lot of definitions. Okay. Uh, Let's see. Now we have barrack. B-A-R-R-A-C-K. It is the first form. It's a noun from 1686. One, a building or set of buildings used especially for lodging soldiers in garrison. 2A, a structure resembling a shed or barn that provides temporary housing. 2B, housing characterized by extreme plainness or dreary uniformity, usually used in plural in all senses, like barracks. Uh, this is uh, from French, barrack, uh, with one R and a Q-U-E, which means hut, from the Catalonian word baraka. Now we have the second form of barrack. It is a verb, a transitive verb, from 1701, and it means to lodge in barracks. And now we have the third form of barrack. It is a verb from uh, 1887. First, we have the transitive definition, which is chiefly British, and it means to shout at derisively or sarcastically. Now we have the intransitive definitions. Number one is chiefly Australian. We have the synonyms root and cheer, like, woo, yeah, we're cheering for you. We're rooting. Uh, Usually used with the word for. Yeah, we're, we barrack for you. Is that what that means barrack four uh number two is chiefly british and we have these synonyms jeer and scoff which is interesting because that seems like the opposite of root and cheer uh so what happened when they went over to australia the the word definition changed um barracker is a noun this is perhaps from the dialect in northern england uh barrack which means to brag All right, last word for this episode is barracks bag. It is a noun from 1938, a fabric bag for carrying personal equipment, especially the synonym duffel bag. You know what time it is. It is time for me to look up what holidays are landing on today, if any. Um, Also, I have to pick a word of the episode. Let's pick mm, barong. As the word of the episodes, that is the thick-backed, thin-edged knife or sword used by the Moros. Uh, All right, scrolling through to March 6th. Ooh, it is Employee Appreciation Day. So if you're an employee, I hope you are being appreciated today. Um, Ooh, tonight. Glad I looked this up uh, or, you know, looked at the date. Tonight, I am going to see They Might Be Giants in Chicago play, perform at wherever they're playing. I don't remember. And then tomorrow, well, I'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, go go to my Instagram, my Twitter, my Facebook. There's a Google Voice number. There's a Patreon. If you pay $2 a month, you get these episodes early. If you pay $5 a month, you get exclusive episodes. There is one up. There will be more soon at the time of recording. Uh, maybe even there will be a second one up uh, by the time you hear this. Uh, that's all I got. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer reading you, awesome people, the dictionary. Goodbye. Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to another episode of the Dictionary Podcast, the one with the guy reading the stuff to you. 
you are the reason I am here. Although I guess if you weren't listening, I'd probably still be doing it. But, you know, you are here. And there's more of you, it seems like, every day. So thank you for all you new people joining me. Uh, You probably haven't heard me say this, or maybe you have. But go back to the beginning. If you're starting in the middle, that's dumb. Go start at the beginning. A1 is the first episode. Oh, I recently got a message from somebody on Instagram saying, uh, my friend and I love your podcast. Uh, So thank you for that direct message. That was really um, awesome to hear and out of the blue. And I don't think I've really gotten maybe one or two before. But no, that I mean, this one is really jumping out at me. So I really appreciate that. You know who you are. Uh, if you want me to say your Instagram handle, I can, although I think your account was private, so maybe you don't. I won't. Anyway, that was awesome. Let's talk about some words. The first word is barracoon. B-A-R-R-A-C-O-O-N. This is a noun from 1848. An enclosure or barracks formerly used for temporary confinement of slaves or convicts often used in plural. So this is Spanish, uh, uh, from the Spanish word barracón, which is an augmented version of barraca, which means hut, uh, which is from Catalonia. I think we actually had a similar etymology previously. Okay, what's next? Next we have barracuta. This is maybe not the barracuta you are thinking of. This is B-A-R-R-A-C-O-U-T-A. This is a noun from 1770, although it is the barracuta you're thinking about, just spelled differently. Uh, A large, elongate, marine, bony fish used for food and caught commercially in the waters off New Zealand and southern Australia. This is modified of American Spanish barracuda, C-U-D-A. The scientific name for this bony fish is Theristes atun of the family Gempelidae. Uh, now we have barracuda with a C U D A at the end. It is a noun from 17, no, 1678. One, any of a genus of elongate, predaceous, often large, bony fishes of warm seas that includes food and sport fishes, as well as some forms frequently causing ciguatera poisoning. Ciguatera poisoning. I think that's how it's pronounced. C-I-G-U-A-T-E-R-A. So similar to the previous word, but a little bit different. Uh, The scientific name is, uh, how do you pronounce this? Svirina, Svirina, of the family Svirinidae. So now we have the number two definition. One that uses aggressive, selfish, and sometimes unethical methods to obtain a goal, especially in business. Barracuda. This is an American Spanish word. Now we have barrage. B-A-R-R-A-G-E. This is the first form of this spelling, but the other spellings are pronounced a little bit differently. Uh, This is a noun from 1845. A dam placed in a water course to increase the depth of water or to divert it into a channel for navigation or irrigation. Yep. Now we have the word barrage, spelled the same way. It's the second form. It's a noun from 1916. One, artillery fire laid on a line close to friendly troops to screen and protect them. Number two, a vigorous or rapid outpouring uh, or projection of many things at once, as in a barrage of protests. Uh, This is from the French word Tier de barrage, which is barrier fire. Now we have the third form of barrage. It is a transitive verb from 1918, and it means to deliver a barrage against. Now we have barrage balloon. It is a noun from circa 1920. A small captive balloon used to support wires or nets as protection against air attacks. Excuse me, I had a burp. Oh, that was the other thing. Uh, in that message I got from Instagram, they said, we love your podcast, thank you, and uh, we think you should keep in your burps. I think they said they were on episode A224, maybe, and uh, so I think back then was at least one of the times where I said, should I keep in my burps? Should I not keep in my burps? I think I cut them all out in the A's, but in the B's, 
So you who sent me the message, in the bees, you will start hearing some burps. Uh, you already have started hearing some burps, actually. But if you decide to become a Patreon, a patron of the Patreon, you can hear a lot more burps because that is coming as an exclusive episode. All the burps I cut out. All right, now we have Barramundi. B-A-R-R-A-M-U-N-D-I. This is a noun from 1864. A catadromous bony fish with a greenish bronze back and silvery sides that is found from the Persian Gulf to southern China and Australia and is valued as a sport and food fish. The scientific name is uh, probably Lattes calcarifer. Sure, of the family Centropomidae. This is probably from an Australian Aboriginal language of Queen, Queensland. Baramundi, that's the word, or Baramundi. Uh, cool that one of their Aboriginal words has gotten into the English dictionary. Now we have Baranka. B-A-R-R-A-N-C-A. Also could be Baran- Baranko with an O. Uh, This is a noun from 1648. One, a deep gully or arroyo with steep sides. Number two, a steep bank or bluff. This is a Spanish word. Now we have barater, B-A-R-R-A-T-O-R or A-T-E-R. This is a noun from the 15th century. One who engages in barretry, which, funny enough, is our next word. It is a noun from the 15th century. One, the purchase or sale of office or preferment in church or state. Number two, an unlawful act or fraudulent breach of duty by a master of a ship or by the mariners to the injury of the owner of the ship or cargo. Number three, the persistent incitement of litigation. This is uh, Middle English, and then in parentheses it says Scottish. Barretry from the Anglo-French barretry literally means deception. From Old French barreter, which means to be active or do business or cause strife or deceive. Lots of possibilities. Uh, Perhaps from the vulgar Latin pratare, which is from the Greek pratin or prasin, which means to do. And there's more at the word practical. It's a very long etymology. Now we have bar body. Two words. Bar is spelled capital B-A-R-R. It is a noun from 1961. A densely staining, inactivated, condensed X chromosome that is present in each somatic cell of most female mammals and is used as a test of genetic femaleness, as in a fetus, called also sex chromatin. So this is from Murray Llewellyn Barr, who died in 1995, and he was a Canadian anatomist. That's how you say that word. Anatomist. Why was it so hard to say the word anatomist? It's because I didn't know where the emphasis was, and I wanted to say anatomist or something. Okay, next is Barr, B-A-R-R-E. It is a noun from 1936, and we have the 1C definition for the word bar, which, should we go back and look at that? We've already read it, and it's only a couple of pages away. 1C, a usually rigid piece as of wood or metal longer than it is wide that is used as a handle or support, especially a handrail used by ballet dancers to maintain balance while exercising. Oh yeah, it's fancy. B-A-R-R-E, it is French from Middle Latin bara. Now we have the word bard, B-A-R-R-E-D. It is an adjective from the 14th century, marked by or divided off by bars, especially having alternate bands in different color, or of different color, if I could speak correctly, as in a bard feather. Last word for this episode is bard owl, B-A-R-R-E-D. Next word, owl. And this is funny because... I think the last word from just a few episodes ago, if I could find it, was another owl, wasn't it? Barn owl? Yeah, I think yeah, barn owl was the last word. Anyway, I'm just putting things together in my brain that don't need to be put together. This is a noun from 1811, a large North American owl with brown eyes and bars of dark brown on the breast. 
and the scientific name is Strix Varia. That's kind of a cool word, or two words, actually. So, what is the word of the episode? Um, that was kind of cool, and that was kind of cool. Um, hmm, what do we want to pick? Um, well, we will pick Barracuda as the word of the episode, but we're going to do the, um, the modified um, from American Spanish, the one with the C-O-U-T-A, Barracuda. That is the word of the episode, and thank you very much for listening. Oh, and, uh, I'm done with the words, so you can turn me off if you want. But you can leave me on if you want to hear a little bit more about what's going on in my life. So tonight, the March 7th, there is a very large national trivia contest. It's called Geek Bowl. I think this might be, yeah, Geek Bowl 2020. Well, that's the year, but I don't know if they're numbering it by that way. Anyway, it's a very big event. And uh, the musical guest, they have to have like musical interludes, I guess. I've never been to one of these. Um, I've actually never played trivia at all at like a bar or anything. Uh, But the musical guest, because they are in town, are They Might Be Giants. Uh, So I got a group of people to go with me and uh, we are going to have a very good time. I'm recording this a week before that, so I have no idea what's going to happen. But I'm really excited. I really don't care if we win, um, although there is money on the line. Um, I just want to have fun and listen to the music and hang out with my friends. And, uh, you know, that's it. So uh, if any of you are going to be at that game, uh, cool. Say hi. All right. That is all I have to say. Thank you. Oh, and I forgot to mention yesterday, this is page 100. We're on page 100 out of I don't even know how many hundred. Uh, So that's cool. Maybe, like I said before, maybe I'll do something for the end of this page, which is two episodes from now. That's all I can think of right now. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer reading the dictionary. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of the dictionary. This is the podcast that I have. And thank you for listening. So this is a little bit weird because I forgot my headphones. So I'm not uh, I can't hear myself, which I'm very used to doing hearing myself in my ears. So I have no idea if this sounds okay. Hopefully I don't need to re-record it. This episode is all about barrels. Maybe I should play the uh, beer barrel polka here. So the first word is barrel, B-A-R-R-E-L. It is a noun from the 14th century. One, a round, bulging vessel of greater length than breadth. Breadth, yeah, it's like bread with a T-H. That is usually made of staves, bound with hoops, and has flat ends of equal diameter. 2A. The amount contained in a barrel, especially the amount, as 31 gallons of fermented beverage or 42 gallons of petroleum, fixed for a certain commodity used as a unit of measure. So the part without the parentheses is the amount fixed for a certain commodity used as a unit of measure. 2B. A great quantity. 3. A drum or cylindrical part as 3A. The discharging tube of a gun. 3b the part of a fountain pen or of a pencil containing the ink or lead uh what are we on three or four three c a cylindrical or tapering housing containing the optical components of a photographic lens system and the iris diaphragm 3d the fuel outlet from the carburetor on a gasoline engine four the trunk of a quadruped So many options for barrel. Barreled, with an E-D, is an adjective. The phrase on the barrel means asking for or granting no credit. Over a barrel is at a disadvantage or in an awkward position. So that was the first form of barrel. Now we have the second form of barrel. It is a verb from the 15th century. Transitive definition is first. To put or pack in a barrel. Intransitive definition, to move at a high speed or without hesitation. Next is barrelage. It is a noun from 1890. Amount, as of beer, in barrels. So amount in barrels. And an example is uh, as of beer. Next we have barrel, ca- um, yeah, barrel cactus. It is two words and uh, there is a picture. It is a noun from 1881. Any of a genus of nearly globular, deeply ribbed, spiny cacti of Mexico and the adjacent U.S. Also, any of several similar cacti. 
So the genus is Ferrocactus, and uh, the genus or the scientific. Uh, so sorry, that was the scientific name of the genus, and then the genus of similar cacti is Echinocactus. Uh, e c h i n o cactus. Next is barrel chested. It is, there's a hyphen. Uh, it is an adjective from 1926, having a large rounded chest, as in a barrel chested athlete. Next we have barrel cuff. Two words. Cuff is c u f f. This is a noun from 1926. An unfolded cuff, as on a shirt usually fastened by a button. I didn't know it was called a barrel cuff. Uh, now we have barrel full. It is a noun from the 14th century. One, as much or as many as a barrel will hold. Two, a large number or amount, as in a barrel full of laughs. I feel like I've also heard just a barrel of laughs, not a barrel full. Anyway, next is barrel head. All one word. It's like the head on top of your neck. Uh, This is a noun from 1840, the flat end of a barrel. We have a phrase, on the barrel head, and that is asking for or granting no credit, as in paid cash on the barrel head. I wonder what the etymology of that is. That's kind of interesting. Next, we have barrel house. One word. It is a noun from 1883. One, a cheap drinking and usually dancing establishment. So, a uh, bar? Maybe that's where we get barrel house. Nah, bar, barrel. The first three letters are bar. Um, number two, a strident, uninhibited, and forcefully rhythmic style of jazz or blues. That's cool. I haven't heard of that before. Next, we have barrel organ. It is two words. Noun from 1772. An instrument for producing music by the action of a revolving cylinder studded with pegs on a series of valves that admit air from a bellows to a set of pipes. Next is barrel racing. Two words. It's a noun from 1941. A rodeo event for women in which a mounted rider makes a series of sharp turns around three barrels in a cloverleaf pattern. Barrel race is a noun, and barrel racer is also a noun. And why is this specifically for women? Um, That doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, All right, next uh, is barrel roll. Two words. It's a noun from 1917. An airplane maneuver in which a complete revolution about the longitudinal axis is made. Uh, And so I think uh, it's basically... You say you turn right, your the left wing will go over, and then eventually you keep on doing that until the left side comes all the way back around to the left side, uh, and that is a barrel roll. Last word for this episode is barrel vault. Barrel plus the second word, V-A-U-L-T. It is a noun from 1842, a semi-cylindrical vault. Barrel vaulted is an adjective. So, it is the word of the episode time. Um, And we are going to pick barrel organ as the word of the episode because I think organs are cool and sound cool. And uh, I'd love to, uh, you know, play one sometime. Um, I think that is it. Uh, We are almost done with page 100, which is weird. How did this episode... Oh, I know why this episode got short. Because I moved that to over there. Um, I don't know if I have anything interesting to say. I'm super tired. I've already been up for 12 hours. I got up at 3 a.m. this morning to work, and I will be up until probably 10.30 or 11, and I'm very, very tired. All right, that is all. Thank you, and a goodbye. Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to another episode of the podcast called The Dictionary. You are listening to me literally read the dictionary bit by bit. I should be done around the year uh, January 20... What did I figure out? 2036, I think, or 2035, something like that. All right, you don't care about that. You care about the words. Excuse me. The first word is barren, B-A-R-R-E-N. It is the first form. It is an adjective from the 13th century. One, not reproducing as a 
incapable of producing offspring, used especially of females or matings. So not of males, just females or matings? Okay. Now we have, uh, let's see, 1B. Not yet or not recently pregnant. 1C. Habitually failing to fruit. 2. Not productive, as 2A. Producing little or no vegetation. Synonym is desolate, as in barren deserts. Not barren deserts, because that would mean there are no desserts, and that would make me very sad. 2B. Producing inferior crops, as in barren soil. 3. Unproductive of results or gain, as in, uh, no, synonym is fruitless, as in a barren scheme. 3. Synonyms are devoid and lacking, uh, often used with the word of, as in barren of excitement. 4. Lacking interest or charm, as in a barren routine. Uh, Number five, lacking inspiration or ideas, as in a barren mind. That is exactly how I would describe my mind. Synonym at the end says, see the word bare, B-A-R-E. Barrenly is an adverb, and barrenness is a noun. And let's see, this is from Middle English, barin, from Anglo-French, baran, perhaps of uh, Celtic origin, akin to the what is MW? Middle, let's see, hold on a second. Just just wait, we're almost there. MW is Middle Welsh. We're going to put my pen there in case I need to go back to that page. Uh, Middle Welsh. And uh, so that word is Brynar, B-R-Y-N-A-R, and that means fallow land. Fallow is F-A-L-L-O-W. Now we have the second form of barren. It is a noun from 1651. One is plural. An extent of usually level land having an inferior growth of trees or little vegetation. Number two, a tract of barren land. Next we have barret. B-A-R-R-E-T-T-E. It is a noun from 1901. A clip or bar for holding hair in place. And this is French. It is a diminutive of the word bar, B-A-R-R-E, although maybe pronounced slightly differently, uh, which means bar. Uh, that, I think that was um, when uh, when we came across that word bar with an E, uh, it was typically used for like a ballerina bar. Um, all right, now we have barricade. It is the first form. It is a verb from 1592, and I think it's just transitive. Uh, Number one, to block off or stop up with a barricade, as in, barricade a street. Number two, to prevent access to by means of a barricade. Uh, So I'm curious because you may have guessed the second form of barricade is a noun. So I'm curious how they decide which one goes first. Does the noun go first? Does the verb go first? Is it whichever one is used more? I don't know. But the second form of barricade is a noun. From 1642, 1A, an obstruction or rampart thrown up across a way or passage to check the advance of the enemy. 1B, we have the 1A definition for the word barrier. Number two, we have the, what is this saying? We have the three definition for the word barrier, and we also have the synonym obstacle. Number three is plural. A field of combat or dispute. Next we have barricado. B-A-R-R-I-C-A-D-O. This is a noun from 1590. It is archaic and we have the synonym barricade. Uh, Barricado or barricado is also a verb, a transitive verb, and it is also archaic. Now we have barrier. It is a noun from the 14th century. 1A. Something material that blocks or is intended to block passage, as in highway barriers, also as in a barrier contraceptive. 1b, a natural formation or structure that prevents or hinders movement or action, as in geographic barriers to species dissemination, also as in barrier beaches, 
and also is in, again, drugs that cross the placental barrier. Number two is plural and often capitalized. A medieval war game in which combatants fight on foot with a fence or railing between them. Three, something immaterial that impedes or separates. Synonym is obstacle. As in behavioral barrier or barriers. Also as in trade barriers. Next is barrier island. It is two words. Noun from 1943. A long, broad, sandy island line parallel to a shore that is built up by the action of waves, currents, and winds, and that protects the shore from the effects of the ocean. Next is barrier reef, two words, noun from 1805. A coral reef roughly parallel to a shore and separated from it usually by a lagoon. Next is barrain, B-A-R-R-I-N-G. It is a preposition from the 15th century, excluding by exception, and a synonym is accepting. Now we have barrio, B-A-R-R-I-O. It is a noun from 1833. One, a ward, quarter, or district of a city or town in a Spanish-speaking country. Number two. A Spanish-speaking quarter or neighborhood in a city or town in the U.S., especially in the Southwest. This is Spanish from the Arabic word. I think that's Arabic and not Arabian. Let's see. A-R. It is, yes, Arabic. Uh, This is uh, from the Arabic word bari, which is of the open country, from bar, B-A-R-R, which means outside or open country. Now we have barrister. It is a noun from the 15th century. A counsel admitted to plead at the bar and undertake the public trial of causes in an English superior court. Compare to the word solicitor. And let's see, the etymology says it's from the Middle English barrester, which is from bar, which means bar, plus stir, S-T-E-R. It says as in legister, which means lawyer. So they took the last part of the word that means lawyer and combined combined it with bar because they think they have to go up to the bar to talk to the judge or whoever. And that's how they got barrister. Next we have bar room. It is a noun from 1797. Uh, uh, let's see. A room or establishment whose main feature is a bar for the sale of liquor. And of course that got shortened to bar. Uh, Now we have barrow. It is the first form noun from before the 12th century. One, synonyms are mountain and mound, used only in the names of hills in England. Okay. Number two, a large mound of earth or stones over the... My uh, my voice got a little little raspy there for a second. Uh, Let's try number two again. Number two, a large mound of earth or stones over the remains of the dead. Uh, Synonym is tumulus or tumulus, T-U-M-U-L-U-S. Good thing I'm almost done with this episode. Uh, This is from Middle English, berg, from Old English, bjorg, which is akin to the Old High German berg, which means mountain, from the Sanskrit birhant, which means high. Now, we have the second form of barrow. It is a noun from before the 12th century. A male hog castrated before sexual maturity. That sucks. Third form of barrow. Noun from before the 12th century. 1A. Synonym is hand barrow. Uh, 1B. Synonym is wheel barrow. What's the difference between those two? Number two. A cart with a shallow box body, two wheels, and shafts for pushing it. This is uh, from the Middle English beru, from Old English berwe. I don't know how to say that word. Akin to the Old English beran, which means to carry. And there's more at the word bear, B-E-A-R. Now we have barrow boy, two words, noun from 1939. It is British, and the synonym is costermonger. Uh, we, yeah, that's all one long word. Now we have bar sinister, two words. It is a noun from 1823. One, a heraldic charge held to be a mark of bastardy. Or bastardy? Bastardy, I think, is the word. Number two, 
the fact or condition of being of illegitimate birth. Uh, so, such an interesting word or phrase. Uh, I feel like I want to look more into that one. Next is Bart, capital B-A-R-T. It is not Bart Simpson, I'm sorry. It is an abbreviation for Baronet. And last word for this episode is bartender, B-A-R-T-E-N-D-E-R. It is a noun from 1836, a person who serves drinks at a bar. And bartend is an intransitive verb. So, the word of the episode um, is going to be bar sinister, because I thought that was just a very fascinating word or phrase. Um, So, that was the end of page 100. Yay, I'm celebrating because I finished 100 pages. Uh, But that doesn't really mean much. Uh, What do I want to say? I actually meant to say this at the beginning of this episode. Uh, Yesterday, daylight savings time starts, so I hope that you didn't screw up your clock. Uh, I guess smartphones help us with that these days. Um, I still think we should get rid of daylight savings time. It's so stupid and archaic. Um, Anyway, I think I heard it's not it was not actually for farmers that it was caused or that it was started. Um, in fact, farmers have been pushing to get rid of it. Uh, it was started, I don't remember the details, but it had something to do with money. Surprise, surprise. Um, so yeah, that was 100 pages. Uh, that's amazing. I am sitting here in a hotel room uh, feeling like I'm, I want to fall asleep, but it is only 3.15 and I have to work for another seven hours. All right. Thank you very much for listening. Um, I, I hope you are enjoying this as much as I am. I hope you tell your friends, tell your enemies, go write a review on Apple Podcasts. Even if you're not listening on Apple, go over there somehow and write a review. Make me a, Give me a five-star review. And if you want, give me some negative comments or constructive criticism. Um, but, you know, I want, I want to get this out there. And that helps a lot. And, uh, you know, write me an email, send me a message on some sort of platform. The uh, episode description has all that info. Thank you very much and goodbye.